now the last ste step and it is uh, just combining step 2 and step 3 to construct the hazard curve at your site if you can understand this step then you can understand the main <coughs> engine of PSHA because all that engine does is perform that step repeatedly for uh, all sources for all sites for all magnitudes for all source to site distances and for everything right so i'll just quickly be very simple to explain the basic principle now one is done two is done three is done let's say mr relationship for each source is constructed gmp to be used is selected now we have to use step 2 and step 3 to construct a new curve which is called hazard curve so generally in order to account for the uncertainty uh, in associated with the selection of gmp we use more than one gmps and then we use a logic tree framework for example we give more weightage to a gmp uh, which is more reliable according to our information and less weightage to a gmp which is less reliable for example right similarly we do it for all inputs which we are not sure about for example the slip rates in faults if they are modeled as a line source and all other inputs in PSHA in order to reduce the uncertainty uh, we if we have two options we go for both options and then give 50 50 weightage if we have three options and we are more sure about the middle option then we go for all three options but give a more weightage to second option right so we use a logic tree framework to account for these uncertainties now the construction of hazard curve from the mr relationship and from the uh, gmp let's assume that we only have one seismic source and for that we already constructed is its magnitude recurrence right right so this dots are actually the actual data points from the past data from that table the solid line is the best fit gr model right and let's assume for the sake of simplicity that we have only one seismic source for our site one source and this is their uh, this is their relationship between cumulative annual frequency that third column in that table cumulative annual frequency which is also called as the annual rate of exceedance it is telling me that this number on y axis is the probability of exceedance when converted into percentage of having an earthquake more than that magnitude for which i pick that number right let's say the gmp is also selected the process will go like this for the construction of hazard curve i will select some pgn value starting pga value which is shown here by the black star i'll go in and i also know the source to site distance right and let's assume that there is only one source and for our site the source to site distance is known i will go from bottom up source to site distance known from bottom up and from left to right uh, by assuming one pga number let's say 0.1 g right right so i will pick one magnitude because uh, there will be different family of lines for different magnitude so i can pick one magnitude which will produce this pga let's say this m prime this red dot is magnitude 6.6 .6. what i mean that le and let's say source to site was 30 kilometer and the starting pga was 0.1 g and if i join them in my gmp let's say that i get a magnitude 6.6 .6. what does it mean it means that uh, a magnitude of 6.6 .6 at that source which is located at 30 kilometer from my site is going to produce a pg of 0.1 g at my site right this is one information which i extract from this graph now i take that magnitude 6.6 .6 here 
and now the magnitude recurrence relationship has a magnitude on x axis and the annual rate of exceedance on y axis. So, I take that 6.6 .6 here and I hit that line I go and I pick that green star. Now, green star is telling me what is the probability of having a magnet having an earthquake greater than 6.6 .6 magnitude right. So, the probability of exceedance of an magnitude 6.6 .6 is this green star right. Now, let me just take that black star and green star and come and start constructing a new curve which is called hazard curve having probability of exceedance on y axis and having p g a on x axis or whatever hazard parameter on x axis right. So, with this one exercise I will come to know that at point 1 g I get this number this whatever is the probability of exceedance. I just use that number to construct this point right. So, point for point 1 g I get one point on the hazard curve. I repeat that exercise magnitude uh, 0.1 g p g a I change it to 0.2 g or 0 0.05 g and repeat that exercise I get a new number right and ultimately point by point I can construct this hazard curve which is relating the probability of exceedance in a particular duration which is one year in this case, but we can simply multiply it with 50 to get a probability of exceedance in 50 years right. So, probability of exceedance on y axis and p g a on x axis this is what we wanted actually right. So, it is simply uh, that uh, y axis of this recurrence and y axis of this g m p e is plotted together right as one graph and this becomes your hazard curve right. Currently, if you have the cumulative annual frequency you will get an annual probability of exceedance. But if you want to convert the y axis into 50 years exposure time multiplied with 50 you get a probability of exceedance in 50 years right. So, th that is how you construct point by point, but this is done for each seismic source right. Currently, we did, did it for one source only. Now, see all magnitudes are considered in construction of that that hazard curve. It is not you fix one magnitude and worst case scenario you just implement. You consider all scenarios. When you are changing different PGA numbers on y axis here, each PGA is giving you a different magnitude for the same source to side distance right. So, in a true sense PSHA considered all magnitudes the contribution of all magnitudes in the final hazard curve unlike DSHA in which you just consider one fixed magnitude in the same equation you use the same GMP in DSHA also, but how you use you fix a magnitude you fix that line on black line and then use that source to side distance to hit that line and select a fixed PGA, but here what you are doing you are changing PGA and every time you are getting a different magnitude and from the mag source to uh, magnitude recurrence relationship that magnitude is converting into probability of exceedance right and ultimately you are constructing hazard curve for your site. So, this is an example of different hazard curves. Now, hazard curve can be constructed for one particular seismic source and then you can add their probabilities to make a combined hazard curve from all sources. So, I may get for my particular site if I have 10 seismic sources which can contribute I can have 10 hazard curves and then I can have a combined hazard curve which is adding the cumulative frequencies of all uh, 10 curves and get one number right. So, obviously, I can also see what a particular fault is contributing to my number and I can also see the combined number or combined hazard curve right. So, this is an example that uh, these two lines are the hazard curves coming from two different sources, two different faults right and then solid black line may be their combined number or may be the third fault may be right. So, you can check these 
slides later and and understand try to understand what they are telling so it may be possible that in one pga range one particular uh, fault is giving you a higher probability of exceedance but as you exceed that another one gives you a higher number right so this is also some food for thought for you please check that